Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy Baseball Picks. I'm your host, actually back in the studio, not in the car today, Mega Rumor 31. Uh, I'm going to do just a quick um, early slate video here for you. And then um, for the main slate, uh, check back. I'll either throw some notes out or I'll attach the sheet for um, this evening for you so you can uh, see what we have going on there. And then obviously some notes to give it some context. So uh, it's a i don't really love this slate it took me i don't have a ton of time like spent probably half an hour breaking it down and stuff um trying to see where i was going to go i think there's a lot of options with it so but i really wanted to get to xfinity to get that video out before i have to go to work my day job so uh one programming note if you go to the description of the video there's a link to the fsi dfs uh website uh football is back we had the hall of fame game and then next week on thursday starts preseason and fsi will be covering that for free so if you want to get in and play some preseason football with um coach rod myself and um some others from fsi um, throwing out their knowledge then um come on in it's free and there's a huge discount on our season package also if you sign up as an early bird so check that out Okay, the so first game, we have uh, Houston and the Yankees. We have Verlander and Cortez. Verlander returning to Houston uh, against the Yankees team that's um, still there, still competing, but just slipping, you know, uh, away. So I was actually at their minor league game last night, and, you know, there's really not much there to call up for, like, September help either. I mean, you've got some of the guys that were, like, um, Oswald Cabrera and Pereira, and, but really not a ton um going on there so i don't know what they're going to do but cortez is back i just don't really think he's going to go that deep in the game here so definitely not on him houston's starting to put together starting to become hot uh 83 degrees there wind blowing across maybe out to right field so a little bit uh definitely like the houston bats here and, and then the yankees would just be leverage against fairlander Tampa Bay and Detroit, uh, Savali, they got in the trade from Cleveland and uh, Scooball. I really wasn't a huge fan of Savali and um, Isival in, uh, when he was in Cleveland here. It gets a Detroit team that's uh, okay. You know, there's some strikeouts and it's a decent matchup, so I'm okay with them in an 8-5. You know, kind of a break of the, the two guys if you're trying to get on some of these high-priced bats in. A school ball on the other side, like Tampa Bay has been better recently. They're starting to put it together. They're definitely going to throw an all right-handed lineup at him being a lefty. Uh, so the bottom of the lineup isn't great, but the top of the lineup is super solid. So scooball has been, had some good games since he came back from injury. They usually are kind of, um, you know, watch how far he goes too, because they don't want, you know, he's playing for 24, 25 into the future, nothing for this year. So just to continue to get him some MLB experience. So potential SP2 candidate, because there are really not that many on the small slate. Uh, and then bat-wise, Tampa Bay is my favorite GPP against him. The Detroit's probably uh, just um, a cheap fill-in one. FanDuel, you really don't – I didn't I didn't even do a lineup here. You only have the first three games. You have Houston Yankees, Tampa Bay, Detroit, and Atlanta, and and Chicago. And I think Detroit's really the only cheap fill-in if you're playing for Orlando. So you kind of have to play uh, for them, probably just sticking to the lefties up top, like McGinstry, Green, and Torkison's okay, Carpenter. Um, you know, so – uh, you kind of on FanDuel have to play Detroit to to make things work, or you're really picking off a lot of um, cheap uh, one-off bats there. So we have the Braves and the Cubs. The uh, Braves, we thought that game would be a, a, a track meet on a baseball field yesterday, but the Cubs really didn't put up much, and um, Morton actually pitched a pretty good game, but the Braves again went off and just – are scoring run after run after run. It's just amazing. Wind blowing in here, 11 miles per hour. So, again, that should curtail hitting a bit, but it's the Braves, and they've been good. Asiad is pitched a little bit, but not too deep in the game. So, he'll go a little bit, and then the bullpen will pretty much take over. But, again, they, they took a beating yesterday. So, uh, we'll have to see if they have anything left there. So, obviously, like the Braves here, um, stack them any which way. Uh, maybe some of the cheaper guys will start to get in on the bottom, but like they did made the trades to get some of these people to fill in, but maybe they're going to be more like 
getaway day fill-ins. So like on a Monday or a Thursday or a Wednesday in the middle of the week, it looks like the projective lineup is their regular lineup. So you could stack the Braves any which way you want to here. And then Cubs on the other side, I think it's just a GPP. Elder, I think it's okay against this Cubs team here. He's been kind of neutral this season. Not not great, not not bad. But the wind blowing, it definitely helps him. So I think, you know, in the mid-range, he might be my second favorite one. Uh, Pavet is listed as a long reliever again. If he doesn't actually get the start start, then he might be a little bit dangerous. And maybe we've seen before where he hasn't pitched and he's been scheduled to be the long reliever. So maybe Elder is the safest one in the mid-range there. And <clears throat> probably on FanDuel, probably would be my second choice if you're not taking Verlander. And Assad not interested in. Okay, um, next we have the Marlins and the Rangers. We have George Soriano and John Gray. Soriano's a reliever out of the bullpen. <clears throat> They're actually giving the start. He's not an opener. And he has actually gone like in relief like three or four innings a couple of times and actually put up some decent points. So I think this is a YOLO play at 4K, especially if you want to like to try to full stack the Braves with a with a decent pitcher like Verlander or Abbott. So um, like I would not count him out in um, GPPs here. I don't think he's a cash play, but at 4K, he doesn't need to do much. And if he does get three to four innings, even though he's not like stretched out, uh, I guess it is a dangerous proposition going against the Texas team, but it does look like he's got some uh, strikeout ability. And it might be, you know, maybe the Texas lineup rolls out. Maybe they're resting some guys. Today. You, you, you never know. So um, see what the Texas lineup looks like. And I think that Soriano might be a YOLO play there. Graham, not really. He's just, I don't think he's scored double digit DK points in a long time. And the Marlins aren't bad. Like the Marlins aren't the Marlins of a couple of years ago. They're actually contending for the playoffs and been strong, made some uh, trades got jazz back and, and they're looking pretty formidable. So uh, I think Miami and they have a lot of cheap um, bats here. So I think they really help you fill out your, your lineup here with some quality bats. And then Texas is probably my fourth favorite stack behind Cincinnati, Atlanta and Houston. So definitely be playing some of them just in case uh, Soriano and the guys behind him struggle. Toronto and Boston. I was kind of wrong on this yesterday. I thought, you know, Toronto, would um, struggle in Boston, would uh, really um, take it to Manoa. Uh, they did put up some damage, but it wasn't as bad. It looks like the Toronto bullpen is starting to stabilize a little bit. They only had to go with uh, two guys, one inning, and then their closer now with Romano out. It's been Hicks, I believe. And I, I think he had, like, phase four batters. So Barrios, I like him better at home. So definitely like the Red Sox um, left-handed bats here. And then Pavetta, again, if he's the actual starter, then he's super safe. If he's opener and we're guaranteed he's going to come in, then I mean, I think he's definitely probably the way he's pitched recently and the way Toronto, I know they looked better yesterday. But that was going to lose lefty. He's a righty. He has been reverse splits at times in his career. So, you know, that bodes well for the righties. And in Toronto, wind blowing in here four miles per hour, which is kind of a new, new it doesn't really neutralize the field, but, um, you know, it's pretty much as a hitter's park. So four is not really enough to really uh, make me bump up pitchers and scare me off bats at all. So I think they're both GPP plays here bat-wise. Like Toronto, I like Boston with all those lefties more than Toronto, but I think both are in play if you're most mass multi-entering. Uh, finally, we have uh, Washington and Cincinnati. Washington, it was a Rochester team. It was their farm team that played against the uh, the Yankees, I went to the game last night, and big country Matt Adams was there, and he hit a bomb. So I don't know if he's just hanging out in the minor leagues now. Of course, he was only batting, like, probably, like, 175 or something. We had, like, 20 home runs in the season, the like typical Matt Adams. So he used to just go up and just absolutely crush uh, lefties, uh, or righties. So I, I don't know if he's down there and they're going to bring him back up or if they're, he's just – that's where he is now, and – uh, you know, Washington's trying to get a look at some of these younger guys. But anyways, Adon's getting the starts. Um, and we saw like Trevor Williams might get the start. He was on bereavement leave and um, might be back for that. So it doesn't matter whoever the pitcher is. I'm not playing them. And Andrew Abbott, 
he came onto the scene and was like lights out, slowed down a little bit. This is a great matchup against Washington, even though they don't strike out a ton and they do have some decent uh, right-handed bats to go up against him. Um, I think he should be good. And if you can afford him, uh, he's only $400 more than Verlander. He's the most expensive one. He's a little bit cheaper on FanDuel. Uh, well, for the he's not on the Verlander slate, so never mind on that one. Um, and then I think here um, he's in play if you want to be a little bit different in cash and, and not play the chalk. So uh, looking at lineups here, uh, I'm going to take Cincinnati as the bat. So Verlander, um, give me De La Cruz, give me McLean, give me Benson to give me a little bit of savings at Friedel and then figure out who your fifth is. On the GPP one, what I did was I went through and because Cincinnati can be interchangeable with Atlanta, can be interchangeable with Houston, even can be interchangeable with Texas. So I think the way to play today is pick your favorite of the four teams or pick all the four teams and just take the top bats there. And what I did in the GPP section is I'm not going to give you a GPP, but I'm going to give you the best price per dollar player at the position. Bell from it came over from Cleveland switch hitter for Miami in a, in a good matchup there. Chavis uh, from Washington is also um, decent. Uh, he probably hits down to the bottom lineup, but he's got the lefty here and um, he's good price for dollar. Uh, Jeter Downs also, he got called back up. He was a huge prospect for the Red Sox, and then they kind of gave up on him. And now he's in the Washington system. They're bringing him back up to give him some opportunity to to play here. So, uh, and they sit down um, with Luis Garcia the, to the minors to try to figure things out after he was only batting like a buck 75 or something. So, and he didn't fare well last night either. Uh, so, but Jeter Downs uh, in play. Vargas um, is uh, in play at third base, a, a decent one to kind of look at there to fill in your lineups if you have a third base open. I mean, that's going to be hard, which is usually some decent, um, but he's also been hitting in the middle of the order and actually doing quite well for Washington since um, – they brought him up. Urias is um, on Boston now. They demoted Arroyo and they traded to him from Milwaukee. And he had a really bad season in Milwaukee. But this guy, if you watch the World Baseball Classic, is the one that hit that 3-1 bomb for Mexico against the USA. And in the previous years, he had 16 home runs and 32 home runs and hit about 275. So the talent, everything's there. He was dealing with injury, lost some playing time in Milwaukee, got platooned. But here's maybe a chance on Boston for him to come out and, and do some stuff. So, you know, he's definitely a, a sleeper in the value place. Wendell, again, looking at Florida guys there. Um, Duran is a little bit more expensive for Texas, but I really believe in this this guy and his power and he's only 3600 so he's a little bit more expensive than some of the rest of these lower price value guys but i, I like the quality of him there and then for outfield uh again washington has some really good bats i know they're against abbott who's one of the probably one of the popular pitchers but uh, i just garrett and um call have some speed and uh, really hit well for contact and, and can get on and they don't really need to do too much at their price tag. Uh, Bowers leading off for the Yankees, even if against Verlander, I'm fine there. He could be the one that scores the only run of the game off of a home run there, has some power. Um, I got for Tampa Bay has the split advantage and then another Florida one um, Sanchez is very cheap. So that's what I got for you. So again, if you have any questions on the slate, put them in the chat below, check back um, later this, this afternoon and I'll have some notes for the uh, late slate. If I, if I'm feeling really generous, I'll attach a JPEG um, file. Or not, usually what it is, it's, it's a link to the Google doc and then it'll take you to um, a picture of the, um, sheet that you have here but it'll be for the main and not for the um 
early ones. So uh appreciate you watching. If this helps you, help us back. Like the video, subscribe to our channel so you know our videos are coming out. Uh, maybe it's four o'clock in the car, <laughs> like yesterday. Um, you never know. Check out my NASCAR videos this weekend and uh, appreciate you watching. So if you want more information, like I said, I'm FSI DFS. Want to get in there and sign up for the free season season football, check out our football package that's um there in the description of the video. So thanks for watching. Good luck in your contest. I'm going to jump off here, finish up my NASCAR research and bang out that video. I'll see you next time.